Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, politics, media, culture, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment to like and share this program, whether you watch us on YouTube or Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, hit the notifications button so that you can let your friends know about the conversation as it is happening. Also, please take a moment to go to fpcgear.com. That's fpcgear.com. It's a great way to support the work that we're doing here. There you go there. You'll find all sorts of cool Pro 2A swag. Uh, and know that everything that you buy there, every dollar that you spend, goes right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment, and you can look good doing it. That's fpcgear.com. Now, talking about supporting the Second Amendment, uh, we tell you guys all the time, look, it's that time of year. Policy legislation is being introduced all around the country, and nowhere is it more evident that we are active when it comes to dealing with some of this policy than Washington, D.C. So with that, we have our lead D.C. advocate, Mr. Phil Watson, on the line to talk about what's going on in Washington, D.C. With that, Phil, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Craig? I am doing excellent. Uh, you know, hey, I want to let our I want to let our viewers know if your audio is kind of low or kind of bad, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. You have no idea how much work we had to go to be able to make this connection. I swear the government shutdown is affecting the internet. <laughs> or at least our connection to Washington, D.C. Yeah, at, le at least ours anyway. Exactly, exactly. They're, go they're going after the guns, folks, and they're starting with our internet connection. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Anyway, so tell us, what is going on there in Washington, D.C.? Well, everybody on both sides of the Hill is, are really focused on two bills and a, a third issue specifically. Number one is H.R. 8 by Representative Mike Thompson uh, here in the House. Number two is uh, S7 over in the U.S. Senate, uh, introduced by Marco Rubio. And uh, the third thing, of course, is the upcoming nomination of... Uh, possible next attorney general mr barr uh so that that's the third big issue that's going on right all right now. well let, let's let's break them down let's break them down separately so first let's talk about the the at least one that has a, a a big likelihood of passing in the house and that is senator thompson's bill tell us what it does uh representative thompson's bill is a u universal background check bill uh not necessarily unlike uh, all the other ones that have been introduced in the past, but um, it's it's hard to say what's actually going to go to the floor because uh, if it goes to committee for markup, you can see all kinds of different amendments being introduced and uh, a bill that's completely different from the one now going to the floor and being sent over to the Senate. So I don't want to tell people it's going to be this specific bill that's going to be voted on, uh, because we don't know necessarily that it's going to be this specific bill going to the floor and then going over to the Senate quite yet. So um, I think the, the big thing right now is just to probably try to oppose the bill because, number one, um, as everybody knows, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a questionable bill to begin with. So uh, it's, not, it's not being pushed by anybody that's uh, a supporter of the Second Amendment. So that, that's a big issue right now. Okay. Now tell us a little bit about uh, Senator Marco Rubio's bill, which is the uh, red flag, the bill that supports red flag laws in, in states and municipalities. Yeah, Marco Rubio introduced a, a similar bill last year. And again, with, with, the, uh, with, with the bill, I don't want to say it does. It's going to be a, a specific bill because they may send it to markup and alter it. So um we, we, we know what, it, what it's going to do, and it's going to offer funding to states that in, introduce or ha already have uh, red flag laws. Um, so that could be a potential mm -hmm. big issue because we don't know the, what, what, what the, all these different states are doing necessarily and if they'll even comply mm -hmm. with the federal mandate for the funding. So that's going to be a big mm -hmm. deal there. Well, that, that, I just find that interesting because if you want to look at states that have red flag laws, you have, uh, let's see, you have Vermont, which took the guns of somebody who was not a danger themselves or others, but because someone else said they were going to steal their guns, they took their guns. You've got, uh, you've got Maryland, where they actually shot a guy who was 
uh, resisting a gun confiscation order. Uh, oh, and then there's Florida, where in the first two months, there were 450 uh, of these things issued, 400 of them in one county uh, by the by a sheriff who, by the way, was just suspended by the governor uh, because of how he handled Parkland. But you know, these are the sorts of states, or oh, then there's the, the birthplace of these things, which is California. Uh, these are the sorts of states and, and, and policies that are going to receive funding, supposedly, or could potentially receive funding from, uh, from this sort of a, a government or, go- I mean, let, me, let me clarify, GOP-sponsored legislation. Right, 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 right. And the big, big problem with these red flag laws is they're um, not not just most of, mostly you use a lower level of evidentiary standard uh, than than you than it's used to convict somebody in a court of law. You don't even really get your day in court until after you've had your property seized and you've basically already been convicted uh, by a judge. No jury, no trial whatsoever. No chance for you to. Uh, have witnesses or submit evidence before the cops show up to your house and essentially steal your property from you. Oh, yeah. And and by the way, there's no – and I keep people keep seeing people say, well, but as Republicans, we have to address the issue of mental health. That's what we always talk about. But the problem is there's no mental health in any of this. There's At no point in this time has a mental health professional either been engaged or employed except potentially – by the individual seeking to get their rights back. And by the way, that means it comes out of their own pocket. Exactly. And that's that's what I, I tell staff and representatives here that ask me about the, these types of issues is, number one, there's usually in these types of bills, uh, in these laws, there's usually no type of uh, mental health treatment, mental health counseling, possible commitment or investigate further investigation by the police. It's take the person's guns and then let them back out on the street to do whatever, whenever. And if they actually are a, a supposed threat, wouldn't you want to have them examined or uh, in extreme cases, yes, committed? Or if they've actually committed a crime, uh, arrest them for that crime. But what we're doing here is we're essentially putting a Band-Aid on the rare cases that are people who are an extreme risk. And you're, you're taking a weapon from them and letting them free to go with freedom to possibly get more weapons or do whatever, whenever. So, I mean, it's a big deal, and I, I think this is this is feel-good legislation, but also legislation that, that attacks uh, people's right to keep and bear arms and your right to due process it, as well. Exactly. You know, I, probably a, a, a recent example is right here in California where we have these sorts of laws uh, we had we just had a, a police officer that was killed by an individual who six or seven months ago, a few months ago, was actually ordered to give up his firearms somehow because, well, let's see, people who want to commit crime actually, you, people who want to commit their crime using a firearm actually can still get firearms. Uh, but, you know, he still got his hands on a firearm and actually wound up uh, taking the life of, of a law enforcement officer uh, right here in Northern California in Davis, right across the causeway. Um, right. Now, speaking of, of you know, anti-gun legis- legislation or people supported by Republicans, let's talk about Mr. William Barr. He's someone who actually supports uh, uh, extreme risk protection orders, as, as well as has talked about his support of, quote-unquote, reasonable regulation uh, of the Second Amendment. Uh, let's talk a little bit about his confirmation uh, to the uh, to become the next attorney general, how how are things looking for him? You know, it's really too early to tell. Uh, we we've just found out that he's going to apparently be the nominee to be the next attorney general. So uh, it's really too early to take the temperature here on Capitol Hill and know exactly what's what's going to happen. So it's really important that people people pay attention to this and. If they don't want this this person who appears to be an anti Second Amendment nominee, uh, based on his not just his recent background but his background going back into the 1990s, um, it's important that they contact their representatives and their senators, and they can do so using using FPC's website. There, so um, it's a big deal. The Attorney General of the United States has power over over the ATF and what the ATF does and 
uh, what other federal law enforcement agencies do and what policies they implement. So we don't want an anti-Second Amendment crusader as, as the Attorney General. Um, and Trump has nominated a guy who appears just to be that. Well, exactly, exactly. Well, uh, I, you know, I know he just testified before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Um, it will be very, very interesting to see how, uh, how re- once again, Republicans respond. Because let's just be real. Look, it was the, it was the, it was the two A movement, two A advocates that played a major role in helping both President Trump get elected, as well as help, uh, help, rep- help, uh, you know, take control of the Senate. And it was a dis- it was a major disappointment that wound up causing them to lose the House. I would hate to see us lose the Senate and lose the White House because they refused to step up and actually be pro Second Amendment. Because so far, I-, I haven't seen anything come out of this administration uh, except uh, except two Supreme Court justices. No, those are no small things. But I was expecting the most pro Second Amendment president ever, and I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, it's been it's been sort of a mixed bag, and um, you know I don't necessarily a hundred percent blame uh, the president for it. The U.S. Senate is is and the leadership there is is culpable in in this issue as well. They refused to get rid of the um, the filibuster rule, which held up a lot of legislation this last Congress. And uh, honestly, if they if if they would have just gotten rid of that, like they got rid of it to appoint two Supreme Court justices. We'd, we'd be having a completely different conversation right now, probably. So I, I, there, there's definitely part of the blame there to go into the U.S. Senate as yeah. well and uh, Leader McConnell. Well, that's, but... That's, but, but, but the, I, I'd like not to say that, but it's just yeah. true. Well, but the, but the U.S. Senate, what, they weren't the ones who came out and said, uh, take the guns first, due process right. second. And they also weren't the ones who said, we're going to ban bump stocks. Right. So... Exactly. Anyway, that's just my two cents. Anyway, Phil, hey, thank you so much for the work that you're doing there. Um, looking forward to seeing you uh, at Shot in Las Vegas. We're gonna have it. We're gonna have yeah. a good time. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, Monday night we're gonna be doing uh, booze with Deleuze. That's right. We're gonna be doing booze with Deleuze there from the Leatherneck, uh, from the Leatherneck Bar, or Leatherneck Club there in Las Vegas. We're gonna have a ton of different guests. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Phil is going to be there, so uh, you know that that's going to be the place to be. Ain't that right, Phil? Absolutely. I'll be there, and I'll see you there, too. Excellent. Excellent. Take care, Phil. All right, folks. Well, hey, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. Like I told you, next week we're going to be in, we're going to be in Las Vegas. We're going to be at SHOT. Uh, so we're going to be doing interviews both for coffee uh, and throughout the day, hopefully letting you guys check out SHOT and see it kind of from, from the insider's perspective. So I encourage you guys, please have a good weekend. And tune in to tune in on Monday. So you can check out Booze with Deleuze. You can check out Coffee All Week. And you can, well, you can join us as uh, as we promote the Firearms Policy Coalition, talk about the Firearms Policy Coalition, talk about it with the entire country, and remind folks that we are the home in the fight for civil rights. Gotta use them or you're gonna lose them. You guys, take care. Have a good weekend. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.